Hey there guys and welcome to this quick review on my Magura brakes. It's not like a really in-depth review. I still don't really see myself as qualified to give full-on reviews of bikes and components and stuff like that. But I do, you, you see me ride, you know, I do use stuff properly and um, so, I, and I want to make sure I give some feedback, sort of first impressions really on the brakes because I said I would when I replaced the SRAM guide R's. So like in terms of performance, I mean, they're, you know, gravity based, you know, downhill enduro based brakes with 203 mil rotors on them. They're, they've got four pistons on them. They're really powerful brakes and they do exactly what they're supposed to do. They stop me fast. They're far superior to the SRAM Guide R's in terms of power. And I've got absolutely no complaints at, you know, whatsoever in terms of performance as you wouldn't expect to, to have with a with a set of brakes like that. Yeah, they're basically the best brakes that I've ever had or used and I've used Avid's, um, Shimano XT's, the SRAM brakes that I've just had on all the sort of seven, eight bikes that I've had. I've, you know, these are by far the best brakes that I've used as I expected them to be. So I think probably what the best thing for me to do and what I'll do in a lot of any kind of reviews that I do where I don't really expect it to be a lot of reviews on this channel. I prioritize rides and the sort of adventures and stuff like that over the reviews, but any reviews that I do, I think a good way to do them is to surf the internet like I've done in preparation for this one. Find um, the reviews that you guys will find while you're looking for a new set of brakes um, that say, oh, these brakes are really crap because of this. Um, watch out, don't buy these because of this. I think the best thing for me to do is find those little issues that people have with their brakes and basically give my opinion on it, tell you if it's valid or if it's not valid in my experience. So I didn't find a lot of things, but the first thing that I did find was all to do with the setup of the brakes. So when you get them out of the box, um, like I took mine up to the bike shop to be done, but I spoke to him quite a lot about it. I can do my own maintenance, but we've got a great little bike shop up the road there. Um, and he's placed right in the middle of all the good mountain biking here. But at the same time, the villages up there have got a really small population. So they're very seasonal up there. And I really want to support my local bike shop, especially here, given it's so kind of remote, really, in the big scheme of things. Um, so I got him to set my brakes up. Obviously, he had to cut both the brake lines down to make them the right length because they come with quite long. I think 2.2 meters they come with um, standard on the Maguras. So they're so he obviously had to bleed the brakes and there is an element of uh, a lot of people say online that they have issues getting these brakes set up properly and to be fair he did validate that in the sense that the first go round of um, bleeding the brakes he basically didn't manage it my back brake was spongy as fuck and then I had a big off and the air bubble moved and it made my back brake completely useless and my front brake was you know almost as bad as what the rear brake was to start off with so there obviously is a bit of a knack to getting them set up. That said, after that crash, he did have another go at bleeding them. He had another chap there kind of flicking the lever where you, where you pull the lever and let go. So as it rattles the, the, the air bubbles up to where they need to be. Obviously, when I crashed, it shifted some air bubbles around as well. He bled them up really nice that time and they've been absolutely perfect ever since. I've had another big crash since then, rattled the, you know, I even hit one of the calipers so hard that it took it out of alignment and I've had absolutely no problem with them. So they're set up perfectly now and I've had no problem whatsoever and I've done some big descents already. Yeah, so that's a bit of a judgment call for you really. I, I have seen that in a few places that people say that they're a bit tricky to set up, but they also say once they are set up, they're just the best brakes ever. So yeah, I'll leave that one down. I'll leave that with you. I'm just giving you the information as I've found it. So the second point, and it was one of the things that almost kind of put me off was that the body of these brakes or you know like the bracket of these brakes and the reservoir on these brakes is basically plastic it's basically a polymer SRAM call it carbon texture I mean yeah I read up about it and to be honest I, I really talked myself around because you know carbon fiber is a polymer and people you know will pay more than they'll pay for a car on a mountain bike with a carbon fiber frame so I really tried not to let that bother me at all and it is just the body when I when I was um, first looking for the brakes, I was quite concerned because it looked as if the actual lever itself was going to be plastic, which just took me back to my old kind of rally bike that had big, long plastic levers that bent while you, when you pulled them in. But on these, they do come with aluminium levers. So I've got a set of like three finger or two finger aluminium levers and they're perfect. Um, a lot of people in different forums have said that 
it gives a different feel that it's not as responsive as a completely metal or completely aluminium, you know, metal full brake body, bracket, lever, everything. It's supposed to be much more responsive, but then in the same form forum and then after testing by pros and stuff like that, they say that that same kind of feature or that same outcome of having a plastic bracket also leads to much, much better modulation with the brakes. I don't know on that one. All as I know is uh, the best set of brakes I've ever used. I've got absolutely no complaints on, on the feel of them at all on that front, none whatsoever. The only thing that perhaps is a bit of an issue with having that plastic um, bracket and reservoir and everything is that they can't put a metal screw into a plastic body because basically the screw is is stronger than the body of what it's going into and the screw always needs to be the weak link if you're an idiot and you just give it absolute beans and round the thread or um, you know strip the thread or round the actual allen key or torx you know head or whatever it is if you gave it too much beans it should always be the screw that fails before the body otherwise obviously you've got a much more expensive part of the whole thing to replace so because the because the bracket and reservoir on this is plastic they have to make the screw plastic so it just means you have to be really careful you don't need to over torque these things um, and it will seal really well because it's plastic and it will snug up nice against each other so it's just something that you need to be aware of and something that i'm not massively keen on but you've got to take it when you've got a plastic yeah reservoir you've got to have that plastic screw so that's one thing to be aware of to be honest with you i'm reaching a little bit now because i looked and looked and i have to you have to read really far into forums to find problems that people are having and, and you know what it's like someone's always going to find something to complain about but the other thing that i did find relatively easily was that people said that the um, rotors and calipers were going out of a line too easily too often dragging the back brake all the time dragging the front brake all the time um and yeah, they were just having a lot of trouble with that. I've had to realign my back caliper a couple of times, once because of the crash where I hit the caliper and knocked it out of alignment. And one other time, I guess just because the disc got hot and warped or whatever, I had to give the disc a little bend and I had to play around with the caliper alignment. Yeah, I, I don't really see that it happens any more often than it has with any of my other brakes. I've only been using them a short while, but I've not had to do it lots. I've not had to realign it lots. Um, I saw a, a pro's review on it and he said that he had this problem a couple of times and that he put the pistons all the way back in as far as they went in the, um, in the calipers and then pumped them back out again. And he said that that works for alignment every time. Not a really big issue for me, not, not really a factor that I'm too worried about, but it did come up in a forum, so I thought it w I would mention it there. But I don't think it's any worse than any other set of brakes, to be honest. And to be honest with you, that's, like I say, I can't really find anything else on them without reaching and really digging through forums. So they're the only three things that I wanted to pick up on with you guys. If you have any more questions or concerns about, you know, maybe you're looking at buying a set of Maguras and you've seen like a massive issue online that you, that people are saying don't buy them or that's putting you off, then ask me a question below and I'll happily answer it. One thing that I did see, and it wasn't really a complaint from anyone, it was just a, a a note really that was that the pads do wear a little bit faster on these Magura brakes. I don't doubt it because they are a much more powerful brake than most of the other kind of two piston you know, calipers. It's, it's a lot more power, a lot more grunt and no more surface area of the pad really from what I can see. So it, they are, that's to be expected really. I can't comment on how fast they're wearing because I've not used them for long enough yet. So I'll obviously let you know when I get through my first set. And then if you remember when I was first looking at buying the brakes, I was talking about getting a set of single fingered levers for them because I only ever, like most people do now, I only ever use the one index finger on the brakes. I don't really see the need to do that now. Um, I've moved the, the levers myself, moved them further inboard and made it so as they're in like a single finger position. And obviously they, they don't, they, they're nice, they don't curve out too far. Um, so I've got like a nice reach for me, perfect actually, and it's adjustable, but with an Allen key, that's another thing. I don't, I much prefer it when you can adjust the reach on a lever with your fingers. These are, you have to use a torque screw on these, which is quite common on brakes. Um, but yeah, coming back to that last point, I just moved them in, got them in a really nice position for, for, for my reach, um, grabbing them with one finger, and it's perfect, and I, Got, I've got the longer lever, so you've obviously got more leverage on the brake, so you don't need to pull so hard as you would with a set of single finger levers further in. So yeah, on that front, I'm not gonna bother replacing them anymore as I plan. They're kind of perfect for me out, out of the box. 
And that's about it on the Magura brakes, guys. I've, I've literally, I'm just bashing out some videos that I had piled up for a little while while I'm not riding, I'm not able to ride on the trails anymore. So I'll get this one uploaded this week and bash out a couple of other ones that I was looking to get done. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know if there's anything else that you want to see review-wise on the bike or my kit. I got someone asked me to do a review on my body armor that I've just bought to protect my ribs and for the bike parks around here. Other than that, I don't think I've got any other reviews planned at the minute, perhaps a bit of a bike check um, a bit further down the line. So yeah, that's about it for this episode, guys. Like I say, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me any comments below if you want any more. Thanks a lot, guys, on your bikes.